Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at deployment scopes. When ARM templates were first released there were no deployment scopes. We had one scope at the resource group level and that was all we could do. However nowadays we need to deploy resources at multiple different levels within the uh, Azure stack. And so there are a number of different deployment scopes we can use to do that. So today we're going to have a look at these, see how they work and see how you deploy things at different scopes. So first let's have a look at what deployment scopes are. Resources in Azure can be deployed at different scopes. The vast majority of them, your everyday Azure resources, are deployed at the resource group scope. So this is things like your databases, your virtual machines, your storage accounts, anything that sits in a resource group when you deploy it. That's the standard scope, it's the one we've been using up till now, and it's the one that's been around the longest. However, there are three other scopes that sit outside of that for some resources that aren't deployed at the resource group level. So the first one is the subscription scope. So these are things that are deployed inside a subscription, but not inside a resource group. The obvious one here is a resource group. A resource group can't sit inside a resource group, um, so it's deployed at the subscription level. Other items include policies, which can be applied at a subscription. Um, RBAC permissions can be applied at the subscription. They can also be applied at the resource and the resource group level. Going up, we then have the management group scope, which sits above a subscription. Things included here include a subscription, RBAC again, and policies again. They can all be scoped at a management group level instead of a subscription level. And then finally, at the top level, we've got the tenant scope. And the tenant scope includes management groups, and then RBAC and policies again. So you'll notice that the vast majority of things are still deployed at the resource group scope level. There's not a huge amount of resources that sit outside of that, but there are some. And so if we wanna be able to deploy our whole environment using templates, we will need to be able to deploy at those different scope levels. So to actually deploy at different scopes, you don't actually really make any change to the template. Resources in your ARM template itself are the same as they've always been, you just used a different type. So if you're looking to deploy a resource group, for example, you'll create a resource group type. But you don't really look at the scope at that level, except for one scenario, which we'll look at in a, in a little bit. But the scope is defined by actually how you run the template. So when you trigger a deployment, you define the scope of the deployment. And that's done by the command you run when you want to do that. We're gonna look at the PowerShell commands, but the same holds true in CLI. So there are four different PowerShell commands to actually run your deployment, depending on which scope you wish it to run at. So the one we've been using up till now for everything is the new AZ resource group deployments command that deploys at the resource group scope. But if we wanted to deploy at the subscription scope, we would instead use the new AZ subscription deployment command or management group deployment or tenant deployment. So you need to pick the appropriate command to deploy at the scope you're interested in. Now, a scenario that's going to come up a fair amount is where you want to deploy at multiple scopes. So to give you a good example of that, let's say you want to deploy a resource group and then you want to deploy some resources into that resource group. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because obviously your deployment command can only run at one scope. So one option would be to run two deployments, run a deployment to deploy your resource group using the new AZ subscription deployment command and then run a second deployment using the new AZ resource group command to use that resource group to put resources in. But that's pretty cumbersome. So instead, what we can do with that is we can look at using nested template to help us do the deployment in a single go. And we'll have a look at that in a minute when we look at some examples. So here we've got a very simple template which we're using to create a resource group. As I mentioned, resource groups sit outside of the resource group scope. They sit at the subscription scope. But you'll notice there's no mention of scopes in this template here. All we've got is a simple resource of type resource groups to actually create the resource group. And there really aren't actually very many parameters you pass into a resource group. All you're providing is the location and the name. So we've got that set up and that's ready to go. Nothing more to do in the template side. So if we want to deploy that, we will just go to our PowerShell command line and we're going to use this command. So it's a new AZ subscription deployment going to pass in a name like we do with the, uh, the other commands. This is just a name for the deployment that will show up in the deployment log, a location, and the template file. Notice we're not passing in a resource group because it's not at the resource group scope. And if we run that, that will go ahead and it will create a resource group for us. If we were deploying something at the management group or the tenant scope, we would just change that command to be new AZ management group deployment or new AZ tenant deployment and pass in the template in the same way. Now where it gets a bit more complicated is, as I mentioned, where we want to do multiple scopes. 
So we've got this resource group. I want to deploy a storage account into that resource group. I don't want to do two separate deployments. That's a waste of time. So what we need to do is use a technique that we've used previously with nested templates. So if you remember from episode 10 when we looked at nested templates, and if you haven't watched that one yet, I'd recommend you go back and watch it before we move on. If you remember from that episode, we used a nested template to allow us to deploy some resources in a deployment into a different resource group and subscription. So we had some resources in the actual subscription that we were deploying to using the command, and we had some that were in a different one. We can use the same technique here. So we can use a nested template to effectively run our initial deployment at the subscription scope, which will go ahead and deploy the resource group. And then we use a nested template to effectively start a second deployment at the resource group scope using our newly created resource group and deploy our resources into that. So behind the scenes, there really are two different deployments happening, but we're triggering it for ourselves from one deployment that will run all the way through. So here's an example of that in action. We've got our resource group being created, and then we've got a nested template and you'll see that first the resource group property is set to the resource group name that we've created. And then secondly, the depends on here is dependent on that resource group. So that ensures that the resource group is created first and then the resource is deployed into it. And then we've got the rest of our nested template which deploys whichever resource um, you've got there. I'm using the inline nested template here um, just to show you how that works and because it's quicker and easier. You can, of course, use a linked template, which is stored in a storage account or similar, um, and have it fetch that at deploy time as well. That works fine. And actually, there are some benefits to doing that. So you'll notice in the location section here for the actual um, storage account I'm creating, I've had to put in the name. You can't use the resource group dot location function to get the the location from the resource group when you're using an inline nested template like this um, because when you try and run that command it actually runs at the subscription scope which doesn't make any sense and, and it fails. Um, so I've hard coded that you could put it in a variable or parameter as well um, but if you want to use the resource group dot location command then you'll need to actually use a linked template to do that rather than inline. We'll run this template exactly the same way as we did the previous one with the new AZ subscription deployment command and if we have a look in the portal we can see that the resource group has been created. And if we go into the resource group, you can see that there is the storage account as well. And that's how you work with different scopes using your own templates. Hopefully that all made sense. If not, as always, drop your questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Next week, we're going to look at a similar topic, but slightly different. We're going to look at deployment modes, which provides two different ways for your templates to actually operate. So hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, have a great rest of your day.